Hello everyone and welcome to Reinforcement Learning Tutorials. In this tutorial, I will introduce the CART Poll OpenAI Gym or Gymnasium environment that you can see over here. Basically, the CART Poll environment is a classical control environment used for testing control engineering and reinforcement learning algorithms. The system consists of a cart, with a rotating pole attached to it via bearing or by some other form of support system. The cart can move along the X direction, that is, it can move horizontally and the pole can freely rotate around its base. Our actions are horizontal forces that we can apply to the cart, and by applying these forces to the cart, the cart can move left or right. The control objective is to find a sequence of actions or the sequence of forces such that the pole is kept in the vertical position. That is, the pole should be in this position. In this video, I will explain how to create this environment in Python and how to simulate random control actions. In my next video, I will explain how to solve the reinforcement learning problem for this system. That is, I will explain how to design and how to tune the Q-learning algorithm that will keep the pole in the vertical position. Before I start with the explanations, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow my work know by now that I always create a post or a website tutorial that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. It contains graphs, additional videos, and the Python code. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. The cart pole system is shown in this figure. It consists of a cart that can move linearly, that is, it can move in this direction or in this direction, and we have a rotating pole or a pendulum attached to the cart. Here is the base of rotation, and you can think of a bearing attached to the cart. The pole or the pendulum can freely rotate around its base. That is, it can rotate like this or like this. Although this is not a topic of this tutorial, I made a video demonstrating the control of an inverted pendulum by using a PID or proportional integral derivative control algorithm. And here I will play the video. Video can be found over here. You can click over here, and this is an inverted. As you can clearly see over here, the cart is given over here, and this is the pendulum. By applying forces to this cart, either in this direction or in this direction, we can keep the pendulum in the vertical position. In this particular experiment, I use the PID controller to stabilize the pendulum or the pole in its vertical position. However, you can also use different types of algorithms. You can also use reinforcement learning algorithm. 
To summarize, the control objective is to keep the pole in the vertical position by applying horizontal actions or forces to the cards. The action space consists of two actions. Action 0, that is, push the card left, and action 1, that is, push the card right. The observation space consists of states, and the states are card position, denoted by x, the minimal and maximal values are minus 4.8, plus 4.8, then the second state entry is the card velocity, denoted by x dot, the minimal and maximal values are minus infinity and plus infinity. The third state entry is pole angle of rotation and it's measured in radians. The pole angle of rotation is denoted by theta. The minimal and maximal values of theta are minus 0 0.418 and plus 0 0.418 radians. This corresponds to minus 24 degrees and plus 24 degrees. And finally, the fourth state entry is pole angular velocity denoted by theta dot. Its minimal and maximal values are minus infinity to plus infinity. Here, it is very important to emphasize that initial states, that is, initial observations, are completely random and the values of states are chosen uniformly from the interval starting at minus 0.05 and ending at 0.05. That is, this angle of rotation starts randomly in the interval minus 0.05, 0.05 radians. Similarly, the position also starts in this range, and also x dot and theta dot also start in this range. And in every simulation episode, we start from a different initial condition. Of course, we can ensure that we always start from the same initial condition, condition. however, this is not realistic. An episode terminates under the following conditions. First of all, an episode terminates if the pole angle becomes greater than 12 degrees. That is, when we apply control actions, either in this direction or in this direction, the pole will rotate. And if the angle of rotation, either in this direction or in this direction, exceeds minus 12 or plus 12 degrees, then the episode will terminate. Then an episode will also terminate if the absolute card position, that is, if an absolute value of x is larger than 2.4. For example, if this is our initial condition, and this is x is equal to 0, the episode will terminate if x exceeds 2.4, either in this direction or in this direction. Then, an episode will also terminate if the number of steps within an episode is larger than a certain number. For example, for version 1 of Jim, we are having an episode of 500. Time steps. And finally, let us talk about rewards. The reward of plus one is obtained every time a step is taken within an episode. For example, if you push the card right, that is, if you apply the action one, you will obtain a reward of plus one. And you will keep on obtaining 
rewards every time you apply an action until the end of the episode. Consequently, a very good measure of the control performance is the sum of rewards you obtain during an episode. The explanation for this is the following. We have the limits of the angle theta that will end the episode. That is, if your pole exceeds plus 12 or minus 12 degrees of rotation, that is, if theta exceeds these values, then the episode will end. And every time you move your cart and the pole stays within minus 12 to plus 12 degrees, you will obtain plus 1. And the longer you can keep the pole within these limits, the episode will last longer. That is, for every time steps for which you keep the pole within these limits, you will obtain plus 1. Next, we explain how to create the card pole environment in Python. First, we need to import the necessary libraries. Here, we import the gym library. However, you can also use gymnasium instead of gym. If you don't want to use gym, you can simply import gymnasium by writing import gymnasium as gym. Gymnasium is the maintained version of gym. Next, we need to import NumPy and we need to import time. We create the environment by executing this code line. Gym.make, we specify the name of the environment and we specify the render mode. The render mode is equal to human since I want to generate a simulation. That is, I want to generate animations. If you don't want to generate animations, then you will simply omit this parameter. After you create the environment, you need to reset the environment. So let's reset the environment and execute all the code lines until the code line 27. And let's see what will happen. Okay, now the environment is created and you can see over here that my simulation window is open. I will simply minimize this simulation window and we have to notice over here that this reset function returned a value. So let's see this value. Okay, so we have four entries in this list or in this array. The first entry is X. That is the card position. The second entry is x dot, that is, the cart velocity. The third entry is theta, that is, the pole angle of rotation, given over here. And the fourth entry is theta dot, angular velocity. And this is the initial condition from which our environment starts. Although our environment is currently rendered, you can also render the environment by executing this code line, end.render. Let us now push the cart in one direction. Here I will keep this window open, or something happened over here, so I need to close the window. I can simply close the window by typing environment close, and then again I will execute everything until here in order to render the environment. So we will select everything until here and we will render the environment. And here's the rendered environment. So let us apply an action to the cart. Let us push the cart in the left direction. We will simply type end dot step and zero means push the cart in left. Okay, you can barely observe the movement, however the cart moves. So if you execute this several times, you will basically see that it, it moves. Now, 
Let's check the observation space limits. Here are the observation space limits. It's a box. You can see the first value is minus 4.8. Then the second value in the next array is plus 4.8. And the same holds true for the other state variables, for the position, for the velocities, etc. Let's check these upper limits. Okay, so here are the upper limits for x, x dot, theta, and theta dot. And let's check the lower limits. So here are the lower limits. Let's inspect the action space. Here is our action space. It's discrete since we have 0 and 1 actions. 0 is push left, right is push right. Let's look into all the specs of our environments. So you can see over here different parameters of our environment. This is not interesting for the time being. Let's check the maximum number of steps per an episode. Aha, uh -huh, we have 500 steps per episode. Let's check the reward threshold per episode. The reward threshold is 475. And finally, let us simulate the environment. That is, let us generate the animation that you have seen at the beginning of this video. Here I will organize these windows and let's see what's happening over here. First I will specify the number of simulation episodes. I want to simulate this environment for 10,000 episodes. In every episode I have time steps and here I will specify 100 time steps and this will be the maximum number of time steps. Then I simply loop over here through my episodes. Then in every episode I reset my environment, that is I reset the environment to an arbitrary initial condition. Then I print the episode index, then I render my environment and here I simply append all the observations, that is I append all the states that I obtain during one episode. This is interesting for analyzing the behavior of the pendulum or the behavior of the cart. And over here I loop through the time index. The time index goes from 0 to time steps minus 1. I print the time index and then over here I generate a random action. I call action space sample and this function will choose a random number either 0 or 1. And this will be my random action. Then I apply this random action to my environment. I use the function dot step. I apply the random action and this function will return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. The first value will be state, that is the state that we stepped into. The next variable will be reward you can obtain plus one reward and this variable called terminated is a boolean variable denoting if the episode is completed or not. If the episode is not completed, that is if we didn't reach the terminal state, this variable will be false, otherwise it will be true. And these two parameters are not important. Here we append the observation, we sleep for some time in order to make sure that this figure is properly rendered and if this variable becomes true, that is if the episode is terminated, we simply break the simulation and we loop again from another initial state. Okay, so let's see how this thing works in practice. I will execute everything from the beginning and let's see what happens over here. And voila! Here is the simulation from the beginning of this video. You can clearly see every episode and how it ends. So let us, for example, modify this by, let's say, making a pause of one second between every simulation episode in order to better observe what's happening within an episode. Or better to say, let's put this 
for example, this parameter to three, to three seconds. And let's see what happens. Okay, so this is one episode. One, two, three. This is the second episode. This is the third episode. This is the fourth episode, etc. Now, a very important observation is where does an episode complete? You can see it completes over here. This angle is minus 12 or plus 12. Again, plus 12 or minus 12. Minus 12. Plus 12. So you see that when the cart reaches plus or minus 12, degrees of rotation, an episode is completed. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.